So I was supposed to drive to Tirana on Wednesday, but they decided to close all the roads starting tomorrow night. So um, now at a moment's notice, I have to get ready to go for this trip to Tirana and then moving on to the next destination, which I've never been to and I'm excited for. It had been a few weeks since I got back to Albania and I was already itching for my next adventure. I spent a few days in Tirana, walking around the city, taking photos and meeting friends. One of my favorite things hey guys, about welcome to another vlog. We're here in Toronto. <laughs> Just had more city. This is weird. I'm not used to looking up at somebody when I'm filming. <laughs> After my time in Tirana, I climbed into the van and started the trek to a portion of Albania that I haven't spent much time in. I've been to Kosovo once, a number of years ago, and that was the only other time I've even driven in this direction. But once I reached Kukas, I took a turn and was on roads that were completely brand new to me. I love this part of Albania, following single lane roads that snake through the countryside, surrounded by mostly emptiness with an occasional herd of cows or shepherd walking through the field. Passing through small villages of ancient houses, some of which are not far from being only a pile of stones. And around each corner was yet another vista brand new to my eyes. So I tried my best to soak it all in and appreciate the newness, stopping to admire the views and soak in the colors of the early spring flowers. This spot, decided to stop for a second and <laughs> um, uh, look at what I stumbled on. Oh my goodness. Holy cow. Wow. Direction. The other direction is cool too, but like, wow. I don't know why I've never come up here before. This is insane. Absolutely insane.
further these roads wind into the back country of Albania, the closer the mountains get, and the bigger they seem, until they feel like they may just topple over on top of me. But I kept driving deeper and deeper into the valley until I finally laid eyes on the snow-capped peaks, casting long shadows over the village of Valbona. And right here in the heart of it all was the perfect hotel for me to spend a weekend. Valbona Resort and Spa has been under construction for the last four years, but after they opened this past January while I was in the U.S., the general manager sent me a message on Instagram and invited me to spend a few days with them to experience their work. It's a work in progress, and she gave me a tour around the hotel, telling me about the future plans and the ongoing development as the last bit of sun dripped off the peaks. Cleaning and removing everything, uh -huh. so then they say, No, no, keep this. Okay, and if you see this stone, it's my favorite. This one right there, yeah, the stone right there is a natural stone, so they bring it all. And wow, okay, so now we are going to our meeting room. Wanda. Wow. I, I don't know how anybody has meetings in here. Yeah, people ask me here, they don't have a I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to pay attention in a meeting in here. I'd be staring at the mountains too much. <laughs> Hold on. And everything is digitalized. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. This is Lia, it's a traditional cooking, mm -hmm. Albanian cooking. So here uh, you have uh, other part which one. Because and after that, we sat and chatted while I ate an incredible dinner, and the world outside turned blue. Thank you. 
after enjoying some music for a bit, I went back to my room to dump footage onto my computer, read, and turn in for the night. I didn't sleep well the first night, which is pretty typical when I sleep in an unfamiliar bed. But unlike other times, this didn't come as a negative. The forecast called for overcast skies, so when I woke up to bright blue, I had to take advantage of it. I wasn't sure how long it would last. I made the short drive to where the road ended and just basked in the morning light, watching the sun play on the mountainsides. How are they even hit this place? This is crazy. And before the tour buses arrived, bringing with them dozens of people wanting a glimpse of the majestic surroundings, I headed back to the hotel to eat some breakfast and relax in my room. When I was asked to come experience this hotel, I wanted to make sure I got as much of the experience as I could in just the one full day that I had time to spend there. So I made the decision that I wasn't going to spend my entire trip hiking around in the mountains. I was going to soak in this time of slowing down and relaxation, no matter how short it might be. And I couldn't think of a better place to do it, nestled in the middle of colossal mountains. That being said though, these mountains are incredible. 
and just seeing them rising around me begs for them to be explored more. So when I have a bit more time, I'll try to come back and give them the attention they deserve. So after a bit of a walk around and a light lunch in the restaurant, I went for a soak in the pool and a steam in the sauna, before heading back to my room to do some more reading as the last bits of light danced on the mountaintops. <laughs> this place is way too fancy for me.
and after one last meal in the restaurant and a much better night's sleep than the first night, I began the journey back home. Stopping first for a quick stop in Tirana to check in on some orders from Global Sketchwear. It's starting to catch on as more and more people have been ordering shirts. And if you want to help support what I do and get a shirt in the process, head over to globalsketchwear.com to check out some of the designs. And then I continued towards Pogradets. And all along the windy road, the inklings of the birth of spring were popping through the bland backdrop of winter trees. I have never shied away from speaking about my mental health. I very firmly believe that talking about that kind of thing destigmatizes it and opens the doors for other people to feel more comfortable about it as well. And to be honest, for too many years, I suffered in silence. And those were the darkest holes I've ever been in. For one reason or another, when I got back to Pogradets, I could feel myself slipping into a negative place. It was likely a mixture of limited physical activity after a number of days away, and straying from my normally pretty strict diet. Whatever the reason, I noticed a discernible change in my attitude. I was getting irritated more easily. When I was at home, I would start overthinking myself into a plummeting spiral. But this had happened to me before, and this wouldn't be the last time either. So after noticing it, I tried to start doing something about it sooner rather than later. I launched back into my workout routine, going to the gym almost every day. I focused more on what I was putting into my body, getting my diet back in to what it was a few weeks ago. As often as I could pull myself out the door, I would go for strolls by the lake, basking in the tranquility and watching the colors dancing on the water. There's just something about the sun on your skin and the crisp air in your nostrils that invigorates the soul.
things like this that make us stronger. And it's times like this that I have to remind myself over and over again to just put my head down and keep moving forward. Thanks for sticking with me. I'll be back soon.